In this lesson, I will tell you about linear interpolation. I'll explain what it is, how it works, and an example of when one might use it from thermodynamics. Now, suppose we have a table of values of one quantity x versus another quantity y. For example, we might have a table of specific volume versus pressure for something like saturated water vapor. Okay, so the table might look like this. We have a column of x values, specific volume in cubic meters per kilogram, and a column of y values, pressure in megapascal. Now, with a table like this, if we wanted to find the pressure at a specific volume that was already listed in the table, for example, if we wanted to know the pressure of saturated water vapor for a specific volume of 0.00, 7504 cubic meters per kilogram, then we could read that directly off the table. It would be 18.00 megapascal. But what if we wanted to find the pressure for a specific volume that was not listed on the table? For example, what if we wanted to know the pressure for saturated water vapor that has a specific volume of 0.004626 cubic meters per kilogram? We look up there and we see that none of the values in the table tell us what the pressure is at that particular specific volume. So what you can do is we can use a procedure called linear interpolation. First, I'm going to uh, explain the basic idea behind, behind how it works, and then I will show you uh, the details of the process. So. Uh, here I have a graph plotting the same data that was in the table uh, in the previous picture. Okay, now remember we wanted to find the specific, uh, the saturated water vapor pressure for a specific volume of about 0 0.0046. So one thing we could do is we could read off of this graph and estimate the pressure at that particular specific volume. What we could do is we could assume that the two points that straddle the number that where we want to find the pressure, we could assume that those two points are connected by a straight line. Now, the actual function of specific volume versus pressure for saturated water vapor is not a linear function, but we can approximate it as a linear function between these two data points. And if we make that approximation, we won't be too far off from the correct value. So what we do is we assume that those two points are connected by a straight line. Then We'll draw a line up from point 0046. We'll estimate where point 0046 is on our graph. Draw a line up until it intersects the line between the two data points. Then draw a horizontal line and read off the pressure, which we can tell is somewhere between 21 and 22 megapascal. In fact, it looks like it's a little bit less than 21 and a half megapascal. Now, that's the basic idea behind linear interpolation, except instead of using a graph and picking the points off by I, we're going to use an algebraic expression that allow us to approximate this more precisely. Okay, but the idea is the same. What we're going to do is have an equation that looks like this. Uh, the idea is it will have the slope of the line uh, and we'll use this, we'll find the slope of the line between the two data points that are on the graph that are already in our table and we'll use the slope of that line to find the point that corresponds to the data that we actually need. Okay. So if you set the, the slope of those two lines equal to each other, you end up with 
y minus ya over x minus xa is equal to yb minus ya over xb minus xa. Okay, and that ensures that the slope of the line between the two data points you know will be the same as the slope of the line between the data point you want and one of those other two endpoints. So solving for y, which is the unknown pressure in this case, you get ya plus yb minus ya over xb minus xa times x minus xa. So if we plug in the values from the previous chart, then it will look like this. We're looking for the pressure at a specific volume of 0 0.004626. So we pick the two points closest to the desired value. We know that the value we want is somewhere between 0 0.004994 and 0 0.003644 cubic meters per kilogram. That corresponds to a pressure of 21 and 22 megapascal. Okay, so this will be our XA. This will be our XB. This is our YA. And this is our YB. And the X value is the value of the specific volume where we want to find the pressure, the 0 0.004626. So you plug those numbers into this equation and you solve for y. The result in this case is that we get that y, which is the pressure that we're looking for, at 0 0.004626 cubic meters per kilogram specific volume is 21.27 megapascal. Now, it's unlikely that we're going to have four significant per, uh, figures of precision when we use the linear interpolation method because, remember, we approximated the pressure versus specific volume curve as a linear relationship. But if, in fact, it is not perfectly linear, then this answer that we get will not be exact. And therefore, um, I recommend that we round off to three significant figures. In this case, that would be 21.3 megapascal. And if you remember on our graph, we from the graph we estimated that it was going to be something a little less than 21.5 megapascal. And uh, the exact number that we get confirms that we were uh, that we're on the right track here. Our graph and our equation match up. If the graph and the equation give very different results, then that's a, a clue that something is wrong and you need to go back and check your numbers. So this is only an approximation to the correct answer since we don't know the exact relationship between pressure and specific volume from the table. But uh, if we did know that exact relationship, I mean, we can look it up. Uh, we can look it up in a more comprehensive table. And if we do that, we, uh, we find out that the the true answer, the experimentally measured value of the saturation pressure of water uh, at 0 0.004626 cubic meters per kilogram is 21.37 megapascal. So our answer that we got from linear interpolation was pretty close. Uh, it's off by less than a tenth of a megapascal out of more than 20 megapascal, so it's close. Linear interpolation will get you a good approximation of the answer. If you need an exact answer, then you have to find a different way of doing it. Linear interpolation, of course, can be used uh, in any situation where you have a function y uh, of x. Uh, this particular example is from thermodynamics, but you can use it in mathematics, business data analysis, and lots of other applications. Uh, you're going to get the best answer when the graph that you get from your table is close to a linear relationship.